Uh, the launch team has been briefed on the way in which a halt can be called to the countdown. During the final nine minutes of the uh, countdown, and we're coming out, we're at T-minus nine minutes and counting. The launch events are being controlled by the ground launch sequencer now that has been initiated and that will be in control up to T minus 25 seconds when they switch to the onboard redundant set launch sequencer. The ground launch sequencer is a part of the launch processing system and operates by relaying commands to the orbiter's onboard computers which then report back to the launch processing system that the commands have been executed. T minus seven minutes and counting and we have retraction of the orbiter access arm beginning to move back first uh, away from the orbiter and then to swing away. This was the walkway attached to the service structure and used by the crew to walk to the orbiter. The crew has been advised uh, to lower their helmet visors. Very slow movement by the orbiter access arm. T minus six minutes, 29 seconds, and counting. The crew is beginning the APU pre start. Uh, this, the start begins at the five minute point in the countdown. T minus six minutes, 15 seconds, and counting. The APUs are turbine devices fueled by hydrazine, which provides hydraulic power to change the angle of the engines and the flight surfaces on the orbiter. T minus five minutes, 59 seconds, and counting. Pilot uh, Bob Crippen had begun that APU pre start, which uh, started about 48 seconds from now. The development flight instrumentation, which measures the stresses on the orbiter during flight, have been turned on and recorders uh, uh, store information for playback after landing. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds, mark and counting. Pilot Bob Crippen has signified the auxiliary power units are ready to be started. T minus five minutes, 15 seconds and counting. Coming up on the five minute point, four, three, two, one, mark. T minus five minutes and counting. We have had a go for APU start. APU start is in work. This is a start sequence. The final chase plane has taken off from Patrick Air Force Base. T minus one minute, mark and counting. The firing system for the sound suppression water will be armed in just a couple seconds from now. It has been armed. T minus 45 seconds and counting. T minus 40 seconds and counting. The development flight instrumentation recorders are on. T minus 35 seconds. We're just a few seconds away from switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T minus 27 seconds. We have gone for redundant set sequencer start. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15, 14, 13. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. The shuttle has cleared the tower.
Columbia on the nice ride, you're lofting a little bit, so it could probably be slightly high at staging. One minute, 45 seconds, coming up on go, no, go. Columbia, you're in negative seat. Uh, that call up says uh, that uh, Columbia is the altitude is too high for ejection seat use. Mark. Columbia, you're go for SRB step. Two minutes, four seconds, standing by for SRB step confirmation. <laughs> Roger on the step, Columbia. Mark, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds. Confirm solid rocket booster step. Check out for this year. Mark, uh, two minutes, 30 seconds. On, gui on board guidance is converging as program. Columbia is now steering for its precise window in space for main engine cutoff. Mark, 2 minutes, 40 seconds. Columbia now 39 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 42 nautical miles downrange. Columbia, you're really looking good. Right on the money. Right on the money. This TV from the chase plane. Convoy's on the way. Convoy on. We'll stop on the Columbia. We'll stop. 